All right, I'm gonna show you three tools that can help you restrain during x-rays. So this is a V-trough. Um, so usually the best uh, time to use this is when you're doing a VD x-ray. Um, so what you would do is you just take your animal um, and you lay them down on their back. And what this does is it supports their body and makes it to where your x-ray can be uh, more aligned and straight so that the picture isn't twisted so that you're, you're not putting your body into the direct primary beam, um, is your brown gauze and then some white tape. Um, a good time to use that um, is so like with the brown gauze, you just take your animal, like if you're doing a limb picture, um, you take the brown gauze and like put it around their foot. Um, and then what you do is you, uh, you take it, and then like this allows you to take their arm and stretch it out um, to where your fingers aren't gonna make it into the, the picture and uh, it's just a lot safer for, for the um, person taking the x-ray. And then another good thing is the tape. Um, so what you can do is uh, like hard images are of the phalanges and uh, what you can do so you take your piece of tape and then you rip it down the middle and then what you can do is you take um, whatever phalange is of interest and you kind of take the tape and wrap it around. Her toes are kind of small. Um, and this allows it to, again, to where you can um, pull like their toes it to where you know the, your fingers again aren't in there and uh, you can't have your fingers in there because it would impede the uh, picture of the bones that you want to look at. So this is our dosimetry badge. Um, how this works is when you're in the x-ray room you want to put this on your thyroid collar so that it's out and in the open. Um, so what happens is when you take an x-ray it will read um, over a period of time how much radiation um, that specific person has over, um, so our period of time is we get it sent in quarterly so that um, every time we send them out, they send a report back as far as uh, how much each person person has. Um, our limit for the um, year is 5,000 millirems and um, once that is breached, the person should not be doing any more x-rays because the radiation level has been met. Um, so the times that these should be worn is only when you're taking an x-ray. Um, otherwise, they should be kept at a separate spot in the hospital. So like ours are kept right up here. Um, so once you're done taking an x-ray, you should be putting your x-ray badge back up there. I'm going to go over the dosimetry report for one of the um, employees at Oakland Animal Hospital. Um, so if you look at it, this is a list of all the employees. Um, and it goes by last name, so um, it's got last name, social security number, their birth date, etc. So, um, so the one we're looking at is in blue, so last name is Smith. Um, and then, so if you look, the monitoring period is from July 25th, 2017 to October 24th, 2017. So this is an old one, but um, so if you look, um, it's a whole body, that's what WB means. Um, and if you look, so it's quarter to date or year to date you can read. So um, we'll do the year to, year to date because that is um, the one that we need is most important because we're only allowed 5,000 millirems per year. Um, so if you look, she's had 59 millirems. Um, so she's definitely within the permitted amount of uh, radiation for the for the year so um, there should be no reason to be worried about her um, being at the maximum dose at the moment so um, and if they were to go over the maximum limit then uh, they would contact us to tell us that she's not allowed to take any more x-rays. Over our protective um, equipment, personal protective equipment, so these are uh, lead lined gloves so what you want to do is um, look them over for any kind of bites or cracks because at that point they're not going to protect you because the x-ray beams can go through them. Um, so if you take a look, there's not any 
bite marks or cracks or you know cuts in them that you can see so that glove looks like it's good not seeing anything on this one either so um, so those gloves should be good to use this is your thyroid collar um, same thing you want to look for any kind of cracks scratches bite marks um, anything that would make it to where they are not usable um, so that looks like it's okay uh, this is your lead line gown so you're gonna also look at this one um, I'm not seeing anything on this either so um, another way to uh, help protect yourself is every six months taking x-rays of them to make sure that there's nothing that you're just missing um, with the naked eye um, so we're gonna put this on now um, just to show you how to properly put it on so um, I'm gonna take the straps you want to buckle it because when you're um, with an animal, they can, you know, move around and it makes it to where your gown can slip down and you don't want any parts of your body showing that you can help covering. So this one you're just going to put right over and in the back it's going to Velcro. So, um, your badge you're going to want to put up on your thyroid collar um, just so it's out open showing and um, able to get the radiology reading so um, gloves easy just gotta put them on so um, once these are on you you want to put them on first and then handle the patient so that you're not stuck in a position where um, you can't put them on so the uh, gloves are important because you uh, not only are protecting your hands, but the fingers, you want them to be closed so that nothing is getting to your fingers. But the big part um, is that when the x-ray beam is shining down, you don't want any of your hand in the, in the primary beam because it only protects less than 25% of the beam. So you're still getting 75% of that radiation in your hand. So um, that's definitely not what you want. Uh, and before you start taking x-rays, anybody that's unnecessary needs to get out, uh, whether they be someone doing computer work, you know, putting stuff in the computer, if they're just hanging out, you don't want that. It's unnecessary and the least people the better uh, why make their radiation go up when it's not necessary. So if it is a crazy dog and you don't do um, sedation, you may need three people, but if you can do it with two, that's even better. Anybody that's pregnant under the age of 18, it's not safe for them at that point. Not only are they underage, but pregnant people, um, they can affect the fetus. So you want to get them out too. So you want to get the um, x-ray on the first exposure, mainly because uh, the patient and the person taking the x-rays don't need to be getting any extra uh, exposure to the radiation. So if at all possible, so you want to set the KVPs and the MAs for the perfect, uh, the perfect amount just so that your picture comes out, the contrast is good and uh, you want to also make sure you cone down on uh, the high main beam so that it's either, you know, doing, say you're doing the lungs, you want the lungs, not the abdomen and the lungs, you just want the lungs so that your picture is perfect. So if you do it the wrong the first time, then it makes it to where you need a second one, which is not necessary. Uh, so not only are you wasting radiation and uh, your patient is also getting punished by me making them get exposed to. So uh, if your animal is like maybe sedate or something and you can buy, if you're doing a lateral or something, um, you can try to, so there's a little window over here if you look. Um, this is a potential way to barrier yourself from getting radiation. So. You can position them, position the uh, the high beam, and then look through this window while taking your foot pedal outside and kind of burying yourself that way. Um, otherwise, just take as much precaution as possible with your protective equipment, and um, that way that it's safe for everybody involved. Um, this is Bronson. Uh, he's our helper. So if you look, we both have our, our lead gowns on. We have our thyroid collars, and then we both have our badges right at the top. Um, so, and then I'm going to put my gloves on in a minute, but he's already got his on. So, 
if, and if you look, we're going to do a right lateral. So this is our, our marker. So we're going to put that in the picture in a minute. So we'll turn the lights off. So I'm going to make that a little larger. And then we're going to put her on her side. You want the right side down because that's the side that we're interested in looking at. All right. And then I'm going to put my gloves on. It's okay, Bitsy, Bitsy. All right. And then now that I have uh, my gloves on, so you want to put the right marker in the by the abdomen. So, and if you look at the window, it's a little too big for the abdomen. So you want to cone it down. So make it a little skinnier. Move um, down a little bit. She's so little. All right. Yeah, you don't want her your hands in the picture. Yep. All right, so um, and the parts that you're wanting to look for um, is the um, in between the scapula, the caudal border of the scapula, and then uh, you want to look cone it in at the coxal femoral joint, and then on the dorsal side you want the the lumbar or the sorry processes of the spine, and then the sternum is is kind of like your little landmark. So. Um, you look at those working on looks about right uh, put your marker in the window again all right right bitsy bitsy we're gonna take that Once that's all set and his fingers are out a little more all right so we're gonna hit the button and then take our picture so if you look at our picture so um, it's gonna be like right right around here is where your scapula would be um, and it goes all the way until about the taxal femoral joint. The border of the top is our, our spinal processes, and then the sternum is right here. So we're going to show you how to do a VD thorax x-ray. So first, if you look at our machine, we turned it on. So if you look at this chart for the canine, uh, less than 20 pounds, we're doing an 18 and a half pound dog. So we go to thorax, and it's 80 kvp and 3.2 MAs. So on the MAs calculator, it's uh 3.33 is the closest number to 3.2 so we go to 100 ma's and 130th second so on here it's already on 130th so the ma's you want to change to 100 and then last you do kvp to 80 uh, that is 80 so um once you look at the chart and set your machine you're able to go into the room so our machine doesn't require a caliper but um I'll show you how to measure a dog if you were to do one. So you want to measure at the thickest part of the dog's thorax so that you can get the best measurement. Um, so open this up and then if you look, um, it's 15 centimeters. So um, there's a chart that you would use if you needed to calibrate a base um, your KVPs and your MAs off of, but our machine does not require that. So her into, we have our trough, so we'll shut the door. And then we'll shut the light off. So VD thorax is, is ventral dorsal, so they're going to be on their back with their ventral surface up. So. We're gonna center this. You can pick her up really quick. Um, so that's obviously gonna be too big, but we'll be we'll uh, cone it in once she's down. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna straighten the beef off out a little bit. So, yeah, as you can see, like I said, the the light is a lot bigger than you need. So we're gonna go on the sides of the ribs, and then we'll go to about the sternum, the end of the sternum, and then just above uh, her front legs. So, all right, and then after we take the picture, I'm going to put in the right marker just because the, with the V trough, it makes it hard to put it in the picture. So, and then I'm going to stretch her front legs up so that they're not in my picture. And then after that, we will take our x-ray. We're going to label our x-ray with the proper labeling. 
Um, so what you want to do is there's an A right here. That's our text box. Um, so the T is the text. So you want to click on that. All right, so you don't want size 56. So, um, all right, so you want to put in there um, Oakland Animal Hospital. Or, well, first you want to put in the number. So number three, lateral abdomen. And then um, Oakland Animal Hospital. And then you want to put the patient's name. So Bitsy Smith. And then um, the date that you did it. So 02-21-2018. And then you hit save. So that is right here. So what you want to do is you want to um, put that off to the corner. So that's going to be your label. Um, it's got the patient, the date, the hospital, um, and what you you were going for. See how to put a new patient into the computer. So there's this plus sign right in the corner. Um, so this is asking for the first name. You're gonna do Bitsy. The last name is Smith. The patient's ID. We're gonna put B. Um, she is seven pounds. You wanna make sure that it says canine, and then put a their last name again. Um, all the other stuff you don't have to put in. So just the first name, the last name, patient ID, weight, and then what species they are. You hit that arrow. So you're going to choose what body part you want to x-ray. So we're going to go body, abdomen, and then I'm going to do a lateral right. So then after you're sure that's the only image you want, you're going to hit this arrow right down here, and it'll continue. So this is kind of like a waiting for you to take the x-ray stage. I'm going to search a patient to see if we can find x-rays that have previously been taken. So what you want to do is type in their last name um, right up here in the search bar and then hit search. Um, and if you look, it says Bitsy Smith uh, is right there. And then this this button right here, the the triangle with the two lines, that'll show you if you hit it, the x-rays that were previously taken. Um, so we are going to fill out our radiology log. So if you look at the paper, so the first step is to put the date. So today is the 17th. Um, and film number, we'll just do number one. You want to put the client's name and the patient's name so that you know who it was so you can look it up for future reference. So um, the animal's name that we had was... Uh, Mr. Beasley, the last name was Dennison, um, the breed was Dash Hound, so, and then area of the body was um, abdomen, so it was a lateral abdomen, um, and then the measurement was the measurement um, of the thickest part of the body, so the, that would be right by the rib cage. So um, when we had gotten that, it was about 10 centimeters. Um, and then the KVPs that we used um, was 76. The MAs that we used was 130th and 100. And then the time is the time of day that they were here. So that was about 1.30 in the afternoon. And then if there's any comments as far as, um, you know, general things maybe that went wrong or if the dog was being, you know, hard to handle. Or, you know. I'm going to show you how to put an x-ray um, or an endoscope exam in the computer. So um, all we really do is, uh, so the doctor can either make a note and then you hit add and then you can type whatever you'd like um, about, you know, whatever you guys ended up doing. Um, otherwise, they uh, they usually put the, the notes into their soap, so they can go to the tab that says soap, and when you add, um, it's got subjective, objective, assessment, and plan, so um, the assessment is where the doctors usually put their findings on the x-ray. Um, so another thing you could do is if you're getting x-rays from another clinic, or you just want to add the x-rays that we took onto their file, you go to this x-ray tab um, and you add item 
actually. It's making me go to image. So you, and then you hit add item. Um, and then you go to the add image and you can paste any x-ray in here and it makes it readily available into their medical record. Um, but yeah, there's not really a format for typing up the, the endoscopes and the ultrasounds, but um, they make do and do it as a soap or a note. We're going to do a contrast study with barium um, just to see if there's a foreign body in the abdomen. So we're going to start giving Delilah some barium, um, which will show up as very white on an x-ray. Um, so all you got to do is just give it to them slowly. You don't want to give it to them too fast because they can aspirate it, um, being that it's a liquid. So kind of just give them a little at a time. And then once we take the x-ray, we can um, see if there's any blockages or if it looks any like any areas look funny so that we can see if there's exploratory needed or not. So this is our one hour post barium x-ray. So as you can see, um, the white is all the barium that's going through the intestine. So um, this right here is like kind of going through the stomach and making its way into the small intestine. So um, in another hour, we're going to take another x-ray um, to see if it continues to go through. And if the doctor wants any more x-rays, then we'll go from there. But um, after the series of x-rays, you will be able to see if there's a blockage or if an exploratory or, you know, something is going to be needed afterwards. We're going to do our OFA x-rays. So first you got to put your lead gown on and your thyroid um, shield. So first we're going to put the patient into the computer. Um, so usually what we do is uh, search the patient number to see if they're in here already. So So this is the dog, so um, we are going to hit the plus sign that's going to add a new study. Um, and then we're going to pick our part of the body, so it's the body, um, and then the pelvis, and then we're going to do a VD shot. Alright, this one you would select the doctor. Um, so once we do that, we have to measure the dog's um, widest point of the pelvis, so we're going to take our caliper um, and then we're going to extend it out and then once we measure, so right here I have about 16 um, and then we're going to go set our machine KVPs and MAs and then um, so if you look on this chart it's got all the the settings as far as body part and so we're going to do um, so it's 76 kvp and 3.2 ma so um, these do kvp so we're just going to go to 76 and then 3.2 is 100 and 130 all right that's already at 130 so then we're going to go in here and position our, our dog. Um, so this dog is sedated so that we can take a really good shot of the x-ray. So um, we are, so Annette's going to help me um, flip the dog on its back. take the front arms and try and keep the um, chest stable so that the hips stay straight. Alright. And then we have our labels, so we're going to put a VD, um, and then we have an L for left, and then an R for right. So um, we are going to have to turn the lights off. Thank you. So what you want to do is you want to grab the the two feet and then you want to um, take the dog's legs and you're going to twist inward and then pull out and then you're going to hold really tight um, and then so we're going to hit the pedal and uh, you uh, want to make sure you're coned in on the hips and uh, so it looks like we're doing pretty good and then when you hear so 
when you hear that beep, the x-ray is taken. Um, and then we can turn the light back on. So if you um, look over here, we have our finished product, and then um, we can now wait the